Hi everyone, welcome to Otaku Saga, I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero, and today in Anime Reaction, watch the first episode of Sugu Momo. If you want to check out our reaction to the first episode of Sugu Momo, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comments section, because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga, and don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So... Mm-hmm. Sugumomo is generic. Yeah, a girl of supernatural origin uh, crashes our hero's house and decides to live with him because reasons. And sexual attention demand it. Yeah, it was cliched. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it was also really decent. <laughs> and extremely well done. Enjoyable story and incredible 2D visuals. Yeah. 2D. Well, I, actually, I like the 3D too because the uh, uh, the Obi sash. Yeah. Well, yeah. All the Obi flying around her. Yeah, was that, all done in 3D in that not. spherical shape. And that was. Cool. I did. I did mention in the reaction that I was not sure if I was looking at 2D or 3D. Mm. And yeah. that's kind of what I expect. That's a sign of good 3D. When yeah. it's hard to distinguish it from the 2D. I don't want to be mean, but uh I the think the anime I think screen. the animation was too good for this anime. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think the story is that cliche that the animation was wasted on it? Yeah, a little bit. Oh wow. But I mean it, I mean even though I actually kind of like it because that would make the anime overall more enjoyable. Like, say, if it were a cliche story of what we were talking about earlier when we watched the Akashic Records, we were talking about Denpa Kyoshi a lot, the animation of that was so bad, it made a cliche story not enjoyable for me. In this case, for me, it's the opposite. It makes a cliche story much more enjoyable for me because the animation was that good. And I like the premise. Like, I do like the it's premise. A fun little, it's a fun little story. Hmm. Um... It's another one of those that, like, if you go searching for manga, you'll find, like, you know, 30 of these type of series. Pretty yeah. much. Um, I really can't, I really can't say much about the the songs involved. They're kind of just passable. For me, at least. Yeah, like, the opening song was okay. The ending song sounded, it really hit me in the nostalgia. Because it sounded like stuff from, like, you know, Five to ten years ago. Actually, yeah, it's kind of the anime in general, really. Like it would be uh, more, you know, more uh, in place, as it were, more at home in like the early two thousands. I think someone said that you know, manga was from two thousand seven. Well, there you go. So, there you go. Um, that's probably why it hits the nostalgia for me so much. But probably one of my favorite parts was. Watching, uh, watching, what's her name? I don't, I don't really think we got Kiriha. her name. Kiriha. Yeah. Watching Kiriha dance around those, yeah, the, the hair, hair stabs, that was gorgeous. That's some of the best 2D animation I think I've seen this year so far. Yeah. That sequence. It, that was amazing. I it mean, was really smooth. That was yeah. approaching like Sancha Sanya quality of animation. So we're going to call that the hair budget. Oh, dancing budget? Dancing. <laughs> Choreography budget? No. Um, yeah, choreography budget. Something. Something. It was It was awesome. Very high quality. Pretty much. Yeah. And, I, and I'm hoping for more as the series goes on. More um, characters are introduced I and more fights that, take place. I think this one has been... This series is one of those um, odd series. It, it's not licensed yet here. It's not uh, licensed in over In North here. America. In North America. Mm. Um, so subs subs aren't coming out as regularly. Well, so when a series is licensed, the reason why subs come out so quickly is because they basically just rip the subs from the official source, like Crunchyroll or whatever. Yeah. So when a series isn't licensed, you have to count on actual translators to actually sit and translate it and then actually put the subs on, which is why it takes so much longer. 
Yeah, and as Fanta... It's like the old days, really. Like Kuro Makuro. As Fanta yeah. said, it's very similar to what Kuro Ma- happened to Kuro Makuro. Uh, the, only, the only difference was with Kuro Makuro was it was licensed through Netflix, which is very stringent on their stuff. Well, not only that, but Netflix only... Like, they, they won't release stuff, like, as it's being released. They'll release it, like, several months later. Yeah. Mm. Um, we'll get to that one in a second there. In a potato. Potato. That, that scene bugged me so much. But uh, I hope that someone actually decides to you know, keep up on these on these yeah. subs. Because I, right. don't, I don't want to run into that Kuro Makuro problem. Yeah, the, we the still haven't Jackson. finished it because it took forever. It to, took forever to yeah get, to get the entire to find a sub who was still doing it. Yeah, um, but I guess since we saw the screen cap fly uh, by, <gasps> really, who the fuck wakes up like that? Please tell me who the fuck wakes up like that. Even if someone was just like <laughs> you, you just like sit up straight. Oh, it was so... That was so forced. So bad. <laughs> it was a really bad first impression of the series. Yeah, I, I definitely got to dock it on that. Um, uh, I have not seen To Love Rue. Yep, I haven't seen it. Same here. <laughs> Similar what Fuka did. Aye, aye. Yeah, first impressions wise, it's like, wow. Could you make a less likable character? Right? <laughs> uh, but I think overall this is just going to it's going to be that edgy comedy that we're edgy know, we're, comedy we, with a combat element yeah so it very much in the I guess the vein of say uh, well you kind of made a reference to it Tenchi Muyo because it had a character that looked like a Ryoko from there or uh, High School DxD except I guess less on the fan service less on the fan service kind of less on the plot yeah. And the plot. And the plot. So. <laughs> right? Everybody wants them. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife. Um, and also that strange obsession with scent. <laughs> <laughs> ah, smells like an edifice complex. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I always, like, I read the first few chapters of the manga of this, and I was always just like, why in God's name would he be carrying around an Obi everywhere? Yeah. Like, like, like I, I get keeping it as a keepsake of his mother, but carrying it around? Bring it to school? You think it'd be, like, in a box, like, in a closet or somewhere? Yeah. But... Yeah, it... Or at least sitting on his desk. Kind of, kind of what Fanta says. Like, what, what, what are you doing with this Obi? Uh, it's oh, Fanta. Oh, it's fucking he, strange. He <laughs> likes that silky feeling. Oh man. Like I've carried around some pretty bizarre things with me. Can I, exp- can I explain why Kiraha is so attached to him? You're welcome for the imagery. Now uh, go ape shit, Dojin Riders. Also, I've bath scene. On, you've been on our roll, Fanta? <laughs> yeah, so's our hero. Bath scene? <laughs> bath scene. I, I like how like he walks in and it's kind of the same thing with that, that bit in Akashic Record mm-hmm. uh, where, he, where he walked in on all the girls changing. Okay. But he walked That's in and he's up. like, okay, so this is, how it's this gonna is go a cliched situation. Mm-hmm. Number one, this will happen. <laughs> Number two... This will happen. And she chooses the third option. Wash my back, manservant. I can live with this. Well, I can live with this. I can live. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I actually really like that. You don't I I like seeing clichés that kind of just get tilted a little bit. Yeah. Kind of broken a wee bit. Yeah. A, a little plot twist to the established clichés. Yeah. Kind of a uh, trope sidestep a little bit. The term for cliche breaking. I'm pretty sure there is. We just there, don't. There is. Um, it's uh, <laughs> reaction one. No, reaction two. <laughs> yes. I think I'm gonna just end up calling it the like cliche kilter. Kilter. 
or tilt, cliche tilt. Hmm. You know, off kilter, off kilter cliche. Mm, something like that. I don't we'll, know. We'll have to do some research. I think it's like oh, a sur sure. subverted trope. Ah, okay, or averted trope. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> she chose the reverse rape option. <laughs> the best option. Uh, <laughs> oh, and then, of course, the uh, voice acting. the The main chick is voiced by the. Uh, I for, I forgot what her name was, but she voiced Satania last season in uh, Gabriel Dropout, and she does basically the same voice for it, which works very well because the two characters are yeah a less dopey version of Satania. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Very much so. I like that too. Even though I I do kind of like the dopiness in Satania's voice, especially when she laughs. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 cute. But yeah, there's just some. Uh, I like it. Fantastic little bits. You guys are gonna, you guys, you guys in chat are going to love that little pudding pudding joke as soon as you get to watch the reaction. Cause, <laughs> my God, that timing. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I th I think we're going to end up enjoying this. Um. I think I'll enjoy it, but it's more like a um one of those uh, uh what do you call it. Uh, Guilty pleasure, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, just yeah, a, yeah. It, it's definitely a guilty pleasure. It's something to uh, kind of uh, let off some steam with. Yeah, we're not exactly. It's watching. definitely not something I'm taking very seriously. But I must say, this is definitely more serious of a series than other guilty pleasure series we've had in the past, like K Jo and. Uh, oh yeah. What have you? Oh, uh, K Jo was quite serious. For for what it for, was for what, for it, what was. it was, Keijo was actually a good sports anime. Okay, but I, I can actually give you that. Um, it it's, was it's just incredibly one, etchy as hell. Yeah, it was incredibly etchy as hell and seriously kick ass. Mm. But yeah, this one is not like it's a more straightforward story. Masogakuin, right? Uh, it's not like it's not like a uh, hundred where it was you know, one of those guilty pleasures. You kind of would just want to chuckle at it. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't really call 100 a guilty pleasure, really. It's my guilty pleasure. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call it guilty <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. It's more like guilty torture. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, that would be Maso going. Maso That, Masa that was definitely guilty torture. <laughs> With top plot. Anyway. Yeah, this so. one seems kind of... Uh, at the, at the at minimum, like middle of the road. We don't talk Red about Wars. that here, Fantasillion. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, I think that's about it for this time. I do think so. So let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. But that's gonna do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Zero. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you next time. time. And go ahead and click on my face to go to our most recent Otaku Saga Talks. Click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And click on the Waifu or Koro Sensei to subscribe to Otaku Saga. And if you'd like to help support us, please go ahead and check out our Patreon page. 